Todos os anos, o Festival de Cinema de Berlim reúne em fevereiro profissionais do cinema de todos os continentes na capital alemã. Um dos mais tradicionais e maiores do mundo, o evento também revela milhares de moradores da cidade, o que de mais novo e ousado o cinema atento aos grandes temas da sociedade contemporânea tem produzido. Além das mostras competitivas, a Berlinale também cedia o European Film Market, um dos mais importantes mercados de cinema e TV do mundo, e o que dá a largada no circuito de compra, venda, acordos de coprodução, debates e outros eventos da temporada. O IFM tem a participação de compradores, produtores, distribuidores, realizadores e film commissions internacionais. E é vital para o mercado audiovisual. Só que nesse ano, por conta da pandemia, organizar a Berlinale foi um desafio ainda maior para Mariette Hissenbeek, a diretora executiva do evento, e toda a sua equipe. E eles decidiram realizar a Berlinale em formato híbrido, ou seja, totalmente inédito. São duas fases. A primeira, em março, vai ser online e exclusiva para os profissionais e para a imprensa, que assistem aos filmes e participam do mercado. Em junho, acontece a versão presencial do festival e o público vai poder finalmente conferir os filmes selecionados em sessões nos tradicionais cinemas da cidade. Sobre essa edição tão particular, sobre o novo formato, o cinema brasileiro e sobre a decisão de realizar a Bellinale, mesmo em plena pandemia, Mariette conversou conosco. Confira. In mid November it already became very clear that the lockdown in Germany for the cinemas will sort of continue and take longer than we had thought. So we realized that it's no option to try and take place as a normal festival even in April because no one from the international industry will be able to travel to Germany and then we decided to do the the two step Berlinale the new format which we are offering right now but we had to talk to all our financiers and to the ministry for culture and the media to make sure that they support us for this solution because it's more expensive and you know due to to the pandemic we have less income so it it was a very How shall I say? We had to negotiate this all up and down. It was very essential to offer also a competition in this new format. We could have also decided to do it like Cannes, who announced last year only like a number of titles without saying this is competition or this is out of competition or this is a certain regard or this is whatever. Um, it took quite some time to find this kind of solution, which some people feel is not ideal, but I, I, agree, I agree. Under the con conditions of the pandemic, it was the only way we could even imagine doing a sort of Berlinale in the first half of 2021. This year, nothing is ideal, isn't it? Like, you yeah. need to make adaptations. We knew we wanted to do the competition and we knew we wanted to do a an online, a digital European film market, which offers films to the buyers and, and to people who, who want to know what's next in, in Slate, what's happening next in the film industry. And then we realized if we also want to do the jury, then also journalists have to take part. And then we had to think, how are we going to do it with the journalists? Because usually people in the industry feel there is a difference between buyers and journalists. You know, it's like it, journalists write about films and that could change the opinion of buyers. So it's like um, it it's a quite delicate handling of the whole Because process. Sometimes the, the, the right owner or, or the press agent, you can stand at the door and watch which journalists are leaving early, which journalists are in a good mood when they leave, which journalists talk to each other. And if you do an online screening, you don't have, you don't have any information on how the press receives the film. So I can understand that also from that point of view, a number of, of people are hesitant to put their film online for a press screening. It's like, it's a different situation. And if you are a buyer, of course, it, it, it's the same. But as a buyer, you go back to the seller and you say, oh, I'm interested in the film. And I think this and this and that. You have to contact the, the seller. As a journalist, you can write about the film without recontacting the seller at all. It, it's a different um, situation. Yeah, the concept of the market is really to offer a lot of things which we also offer physically normally during the Berlinale. And there are, I think, about 50 
conferences, workshops, um, in addition to about, I think we have about 750 films which are programmed online, including most of the festival films. And then we have this 50 conferences and panels and whatever. It's totally new for us, so we have to see how it works. We have like, a, we staged, we, so we have a, a studio in which we invite also sometimes some physical persons. And then we offer it like as a digital offer to the participants. Uh, I think we have around 8,000 participants, which is quite a lot. Um, I think it will be something to learn and to see how what we can use also for the future. Because in this way, of course, we can include more people, like people who otherwise maybe couldn't afford a trip to Berlin. Now they can afford the, the accreditation fee, which is not that high, and they can in, be included in, in, in the events which they normally couldn't be part of. And I hope this means we can also open up to a new new uh, level of participants. What would you say about the selection of this year? Talking about like not only the, the competition, you know, sessions, but also the selection of the European film market. I think we have a, a number of lower budget films, which indeed are made because of the pandemic or because they want to reflect on something which uh, has changed through the pandemic. But it's a minority, very minority number of films. Um, so we have much more films which really deal with the topics they wanted to tell already long before the pandemic um, evolved. And I think the, the program again in this year is very strong and it shows that filmmaking is something a lot of people need to do because they have their own stories to tell. They're also their personal stories. And, I think that was interesting this year, at least for the festival part, that we have a lot, we have a larger number of personal stories this year. How did you manage, you know, to figure out, let's do like this for the industry and the press now and then in June for the audience and the public? What's the importance to keep the festival, not only for the professionals, but also for the audience? Yeah, we had two basic things. First, we want to support the filmmakers who we have invited to be part of the Berlinale but to find uh, the way into the cinemas. And as you know, in, in film, it's a longer way. You have a seller who sells it to a distributor and then the distributor has to find cinemas to play the film. And we want to make sure that the films can find their audience by summer. So you need to start in March in order to make these films travel. And the second thing we wanted to do is we wanted to show the audience in Berlin, which is like a huge audience. The Berlin is uh, inhabitants of almost 4 million. And we usually sell 330,000 tickets, which is uh, a large amount. So we knew we really had to also address the audience in Berlin. We didn't want to exclude them from the event. And that's why we knew we had to go to June. We expect to have still some limitations that the seating in the, the occupancy in the in the theaters will not be 100 percent probably will will be maybe 50 percent maybe 40 percent maybe even less than that it's too early to judge um, but we, we definitely wanted to also um, show the Berlin audience the films on the big screen and not in an online format people have been streaming content so much in the past 11 months that we thought it would be necessary to uh, to really offer it also on the screen. We are facing a very challenging moment in Brazilian cinema. How do you see Brazilian, you know, production? Actually, uh, I think the first time I was in Brazil might have been 2014 or maybe 15. I don't exactly remember. We had like a German Brazilian co-production meeting. I learned a lot about production in Brazil then. Um, the cinema in, in Brazil is very, it's like diverse in that sense that it has some political and social elements, but also very artistic elements. So um, I think last year there were so many Brazilian films in the festival because there were offered so many films from Brazil. I don't think there is a special reason why we don't have that many. 
probably you have some fallback in the production because the financing got more difficult in the past year. And I remember last year at the press conference, someone asked us about the Brazilian, about a large number of Brazilian films. And we were already afraid a little bit that due to the polit like Bolsonaro, we don't have to not mention the name, that he is so, so not in favor of culture and cinema that it gets more and more difficult to really produce like films which are interesting for a festival because it's, yeah, there's always a difference between very commercial films who really address mainly the, the big audience and films who have like an artistic component that the artistic uh, value of this situation will prove to be strong and that these that the people who want to work with the the subjects and and the topics that they have the chance to to really make the films they they feel the urge to make i think that's uh, usually it's a very strong motor if if you know if you really want to describe the situation that the uh, that this, the kind of films which come from this usually are very strong ones. So I, I really wish that it's possible to make them. How do you imagine the future of the cinema and also the importance of the film festivals like Berlinale mm -hmm. for this, building the future? My impression in Germany is, I, I can rather talk about the German situation, that the art house cinemas, they have quite well managed to build up their own audience. You know, that every, not every, but that the cinemas try, the art house cinemas try to have a certain profile and to address the possible audience very directly with social media, with other means. So they have like their, their basis of, uh, their basic group of people who come to this cinema because they know that the program in this cinema has such and such profile. So I'm rather worried about the bigger cinemas who, who might not have a real good perspective or a clear perspective for the next months. And at some point, of course, um, in Germany, the art house cinemas, they get quite some support from the Ministry of Culture, whereas the commercial cinemas don't get this kind of support because they're commercial and not, not cultural. We need another 12 months to be able to see how the pandemic will affect the cinema landscape in Germany and in Europe, um, or even all over the world. But that's even a, such a big question. I, I am hesitant to answer that one. Do you plan to have an online version also for the audience, let's see, next year? Or maybe a hybrid version? Maybe we can come up with an idea to, to offer some films, Uh, in an online version for the audience, but we have to discuss this with various partners because some of our partners are very much linked to the cinema. So, you know, I also need to convince other people to keep supporting us when we maybe want to develop new ideas, like also offering something online to the audience. And it, that will be a major, uh, how shall I say, a major effort. And I'm not sure whether we could already do that for 2022 we might meet, need more time to find a good concept which films for which audience can we maybe offer online and at the same time how can we convince the people who support us that this is the right the right uh, concept yeah was this the biggest challenge for you as a executive director to have the whole idea of the whole festival so the berlinale i think grew it, quite immensely in the past seven, eight years, I would say. We included more cinemas, we included whatever, more partners, which means that the, the Berlinale as an organization, as a structure, is, is really quite impressive. But it also means that you, if you want to change things, you have to, to take this into consideration a lot, because whatever you change, you need to to change the, the direction of a very big uh, entity. And, and that's much more difficult than changing a small entity. The Berlinale has almost 29 million a year and a lot of, you know, hundreds of people who work here. So it's much more difficult to 
take change things on a short term? Or how can you modify a huge event like the Berlinale in such a way that you still have the strength of the Berlinale, but you don't have the change the content? You know, you still need the strength of the organization, but you need to change the content of what is taking place because it's the pandemic and it's the digital changing anyway. And, and that's really, it's a, it's a big job. What would you say to the film bugs, to the film audience and also to the filmmakers who want to keep on making films? For me, film is such a unique way of really with an artistic view presenting issues which you think are important. And it can be a personal story, but it can be a socially re relevant story. It can be a politically relevant story. It can even be only a thriller, let's say only a thriller, because I think a good thriller is always also uh, a mirror of society. It, it shows you what's happening, what's going on in society and what happens with people and how wrong things can go. You know, it's like, so I still believe that film is a unique way of, of reaching out to a larger audience than you can with a book or with a, with a speech or with a political statement, which is published in, in, a, in a newspaper. So I, I still believe that cinema has a very big strength, a very emotional strength, which means you can, you can convey what you want to tell in a, in a much more convincing way than other, other means and in a much wider way. So I think filmmakers should still go on making films. And I think the audience should also remember that when you are in a, in a cinema, with maybe 100 other people and you see a film, you always have more interaction, even if you, you don't really talk to other people, but you feel how other people react. You, there's always more exchange with what's happening on the screen, with yourself and with the audience than you can ever experience sitting on your couch and watching something online. So do go to the cinema. Com certeza vamos continuar indo ao cinema e, claro, fazendo cinema. Fique ligado que o ano está só começando e muito mais conversas sobre o futuro e o presente do cinema ainda vem por aí. 